Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My talk is about uh, intellectual property. Every company owns intellectual property. Some may not realize it, some may not value it, and I'm hoping that I can give some insights uh, into this subject. The UK Intellectual Property Office uh, has done a survey and sadly found that in the UK only 11% of businesses know that you cannot obtain a patent for an invention if you have already disclosed it. It's one of the basic rules and there's widespread ignorance of that fact. Also, only 4% have an intellectual property policy. What is intellectual property? It's patents, which I think are the pinnacle of intellectual property because patentable inventions transform society. Trademarks are extremely valuable and sometimes there are misconceptions about the value of trademarks. It's often said that the Microsoft trademark is worth so many billion. It doesn't actually mean that. It means the encapsulated uh, view of that company and its other intellectual property is worth that amount. Often um, disregarded registered designs, what the Americans term design patents, and copyright. Every company, every individual has copyright over their original work. Confidentiality. Most of you will be required to sign a confidentiality agreement or, be, or ask others to sign a confidentiality agreement. And of course there are trade secrets which can be technical or commercial and some companies and certainly a lot of printers prefer to work on a secrecy basis rather than give their ideas up to public scrutiny and uh, hope to get an edge in business that way. Uh, it's, it's a viable um, uh, strategy for a company but the patent system, the intellectual property system, is international and it's there to benefit society. It's, it, it does benefit the creators, but the purpose of having patent offices around the world is to benefit society. Dealing first with trademarks. Uh, a trademark is something that can be uh, represented uh, graphically uh, and it distinguishes the source of the goods or service. It is, a, it is a badge of origin. There are some uh, newer types, but that is generally the case. So you can register a name, a logo, a domain name, slogan. One slogan that is very visible here is HP Invents. Now, a company cannot invent, so it's factually incorrect. But that isn't the purpose of that, it's a trademark which says that HP is a company that wants to be known as an inventive company. Out of all the things that HP could promote as its main strap line, intellectual property of invention is the main thing it wants to project. These are some common uh, trademarks and most of them have no relevance to the business of the company, but they acquire the perception of the company so the little dog at the top uh, used to be ICI, uh, Dulux Paint, it's now just known as Dulux Paint, and it's difficult to understand how a hairy dog that can't see is representative of a paint company, but that stands for the quality of the paint, the reliability, and so on. Uh, the McDonald's Twin Arches is part of their trademark, the McDonald's name, of course. Uh, my own company has a range of trademarks which uh, a, 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 the, the main trademark is registered in over 20 countries and we also have TM trademarks which are just as strong uh, but there are benefits in actually telling people I, I'm registering this and I claim it to be my mark. Um, as far as trademark goes I always recommend it, uh, a, a search for trademarks it can avoid mistakes in getting up on the wrong foot and having to change your trademark. Um, I don't recommend early uh, searches for patented inventions, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why. 
Um, but certainly as far as trade, trademarks go, it's very easy to search. Registered designs are often uh, uh, undervalued. Uh, these protect the shape uh, or pattern of something and uh, they're relatively cheap to obtain. Um, uh, but for instance, th this will have a registered design around the world, uh, a design patent in the States. You may have heard of the huge battle with Samsung uh, where it was described as two rectangles. You can't protect that. Well, I'm afraid you can and the overall product is a beautiful design and the designer should get the benefit uh, of having created it. Uh, we have a few um, registered designs, one for a structural system um, which is a flat pack 3D system. One of its applications is to uh, uh, promote photographs, postcards, very small displays. It also has very large displays in its portfolio. This is a frameless system that enables the eye to see 3D cues better. In other words, we're claiming it's better than a normal framed uh, device where the brain sees a frame and that registers as a 2D design, not a 3D view. You may not even be able to see that very clearly with this projector, but I can tell you it is a transparent support behind the display and it has a scallop design that is the subject of a registered design. A lot of that uh, field of work is also patented around the world, and so I'll move on to patents as a second type of intellectual property. To be patented, an invention must be new, it must be novel. It must have a so-called inventive step. It, it, you cannot put two previous inventions together and claim it as a new invention. And they must have industrial applicability. A patent is essentially a bargain for the benefit of society. The inventor tells the world about his invention and pays fees which are relatively modest to the state, typically a country, um, to obtain exclusive rights to that invention for 20 years. It is a, only a quasi-monopoly in that uh, you can stop other people practicing your invention, but if your invention, to use the phrase, falls within somebody else's patent claims, you have to recognize that, or you should do, and pay them a royalty to practice your own invention. It's often misunderstood and there are a lot of inventions that the inventor cannot practice without coming to arrangements with other parties. When you make an invention, obviously you've got to evaluate what its potential uh, benefit can be. How will you make money out of it? Many inventions are just filed in one country and, and there's no right or wrong in this. If that's all you want to do, restrict your business to one country. But most people, when they think they have a good idea, use an international patent system, the Patent Cooperation Treaty, and there are regional uh, benefits in Europe of, of, of the European Patent Convention. In other words, you can apply uh, in one application for a large number of patents but at the moment, these are all registered in individual countries. So going back to the flat pack curve structure, very simple idea. You just curve a sheet of material and tie it. I'm not the first person to do that, but I have several um, uh, inventions within that description uh, patented. The yellow sign there, if we just look at one of these in, in detail, this is incredibly simple. It's just a curved panel that's printed on two sides. It's a, it's a, a, a convertible sign. It's a flexed panel tied with a loop of string, if you like. Uh, the, the loop can be disconnected and you can turn it around so when it's not telling people that the uh, restrooms or whatever are being cleaned, then it can be promotional and it can be stored by being hung. These are all features 
that can be potentially claimed and patented, however simple they are. There are many printers and others in this hall who invent things but never actually think about whether they can benefit from that invention except for the one client that they're serving. Um, my company's main business is in see-through graphics uh, and I invented the so-called dominant patent in that field of one-way vision and many other vision control options. Uh, and most people know it by bus wraps. This is the first bus wrap in the world in New Zealand in 1991. And I always encourage people to think globally. So this uh, one aspect of, our, of this invention uh, moved to Australia, South Africa. This is the first digital bus wrap in the world in the States using the 3M Scotch print process. These used a, 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 another invention of printing with exact registration on non-perforated material. Most of the see-through graphics you see in the hall here, it's probably on 50 booths here, uh, is using a perforated material. As this bus is here, and in most countries, it's now gone more selective than a complete wrap. Part of the bus uh, being covered, uh, the, the windows being covered, so that passengers can select where they want to sit. It's interesting that most passengers actually want to sit by the graphic, and in some locations, one being Sydney, Australia, they're now putting on a perforated material without an advertisement for the passengers, com uh, for the passengers comfort. Uh, this is a, uh, a train, underground train, another way of, of providing see-through graphics. Here the panel is applied on the outside of the tube, it's visible inside. It's also visible at stations through the window on this side. When that window comes to a station, because a lot of it is dark coloured, the passengers can see out still, see the station. The brain can select whether to concentrate on the Phantom of the Opera advert or what is beyond it. Taxi advertisements, uh, building wraps, uh, point of purchase advertisements. Uh, this was a million dollar campaign in the US um, and uh, large corporations like the product because it maintains transparency. At places of public um, uh, use such as uh, airports, railway stations, Maintaining transparency is important for security, uh, particularly in these times, uh, sadly. And with see-through graphics, you can see the design or see through. You can create special effects. This is a, uh, a pink trademark of that uh, retail outlet. But at night, when it's dark, you can project through it. And the brain sees the projection dominated, uh, which dominates the uh, daytime pink. So these are all different aspects of, it's not just one-way vision. Uh, one of our slogans is, which is a trademark, is more than one way. That is an alternating sign. This is the headquarters of the European Commission, uh, Bel um, where our licensed laminated glass surrounds the European Commission headquarters. Uh, and it's a one-way vision product. It also saves energy, solar heat gain, glare, and UV radiation. Now, I'm going to touch on some of the uh, potential pitfalls of intellectual property. Our royalty for that job, one of the biggest jobs that's been done, uh, should have been $100,000. US printer printed it, a licensee. Didn't pay us the royalties, and they weren't paying us other royalties. A uh, US court, the judge awarded us $250,000, but of course you then have to get it from the miscreant, and we didn't get one cent. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And this is an important thing. Do you license? Do you sell? When you sell, do you source the product for resale, or do you make it yourself? The people who generally made most out of inventions make it themselves and sell it themselves. So uh, this looks like a corridor. It's actually a room of a security officer in the city of London. Um, this application on vehicles, we call it Brand Visor, another trademark of ours. It projects the brand of Caterpillar at the highest point in the vehicle. 
it's applied inside so it keeps uh, clean whereas on the buses it's applied on the outside so the passengers can't pick at the uh, uh, sign and it provides solar uh, shading and more importantly a glare provision for the driver so he can see his work uh, uh, better. Um, there are many security applications, some like this I can talk about, others uh, the security forces use uh, the product for camera hides for covert observation. Um, those are all a type of see-through graphics, one aspect of an invention covered by a dominant patent which has an opaque pattern, the perforated material, dots or lines. Um, the problem is with that type of see-through graphic, when you switch the lights on at night, it disappears. So that was the mother of a second invention which enables the see-through graphic product to be visible in the day, visible at night, and uh, you can still see through the window. The view through the window isn't as good, and it's a compromise. Do you want 24-hour visibility and reasonable see-through, or do you want the best see-through? From the inside of a bus, you want the best see-through. For an advertiser at the Olympics, they generally want um, a 24-hour uh, uh, visibility. Just whilst we're on it, the aquatic center there, designed by Zaha Hadid, that's automatically uh, copyrighted. The sculpture, uh, Anish Kapoor, that's automatically copyrighted. Uh, and all the text on the advertisement automatically copyrighted. So uh, copyright, we're all conversant with books and we all know that authors of books uh, obtain a royalty, uh, but all these different um, uh, creative um, uh, products uh, are automatically copyrighted. Nevertheless, it's still good on your brochures and other written work and visual work to put the little C copyright symbol. I just want to uh, go back to the question of, of enforcing patents. I was on the UK government's Intellectual Property Advisory Committee and chairman of the subcommittee on enforcement. It is a very difficult task. If you have an invention like the hovercraft, then it's relatively easy to police because there are only a few manufacturers. An invention like this can be printed on virtually every machine in this hall. And it is only worth pursuing infringers when either the potential damages raises to more than the cost of lawyers' fees, or the customers become a, an important customer who have to obey the intellectual property system. And when that happens, infringers who it's not economic to sue suddenly may find their products uh, being taken off. And as a, as a matter of reference, in this hall here, we have somewhere between 20 and 24 infringers. One French in infringer, the rest are all Chinese. We cannot sue them because they do not have a presence in this country. All sorts of excuses are made. Uh, we're not actually selling here in Germany. Under patent law, if you exhibit, you're selling. So I'm just giving you some of the negatives. There's a lot of positives. My company wouldn't have existed without intellectual property. We do nothing that isn't covered by one of our patents. Uh, or we license in one or two patents as well and license those out. So um, uh, I'm leaving five minutes for any questions, if anybody uh, ha has got any questions. But hopefully I've got over the message that there are at least four uh, types of intellectual property relevant to this industry. And uh, every organization should consider their, their potential. Any questions?